All right, nothing like stepping out and seeing a uh, big cedar tree over the top of your shed. This guy is uh, pretty large. Probably, probably heard the shingles a little bit. We'll have to check that out, get that cleaned up, and then obviously down the yard is a whole mess. I got all kinds of trees down there. So it's gonna be a cleanup, but let's at least get power so the family's happy and uh, then uh, I can get to work. You can shock yourself because, you know, typically you have a male and a female in to prevent you from being able to touch a hot wire. So you gotta be very careful with how you do this. And I'll show you the step that I take to make sure I don't, um, you know, risk touching a hot wire. Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Well, just had a big storm roll through. I was actually driving back with the wife and the infant from uh, running lunch and errands and it just came not quite out of nowhere. Uh, we did get an alert that uh, severe thunderstorm was coming through, but it came up quick from blue skies and um, it had heavy rain and wind and took out the power as well as taking out a lot of my trees out here in the yard. Probably the biggest one that's close to the house at least is this big pine tree there. I think it's good 18 to two feet diameter um, at the base and it snapped halfway up. So you can hear in the background and sorry over here is my backup generator that is a whole house natural gas backup generator but um, they actually did something pretty annoying to me and it doesn't power the whole house um, it has a sub panel and it does automatic transfer so it does um, you know cut off the grid power and then switch over to it and then when it senses grid power is back it turns off the generator and switches back to grid power the problem is it doesn't power a lot of circuits now it's a it's a 12 kilowatt, I think it's 12 slash 15 um, kilowatt um, unit. So it actually has enough power to power the whole house, really. Even kind of with the AC, I, I normally don't see over 12 kilowatts of power coming out at any one time. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up a backup generator, a standard one that I have. It's a backup backup generator. <laughs> so um, it's a gas fired one and it's out in the barn. So you can see the barn is that building out there. and it has 100 amp service to the panel so i'm gonna go get that guy fired up and then i'll have both the whole home which is not the whole house backup generator and then i'll have mine running at the same time i'll show you how to do that um even if you don't have a whole house backup generator you know it still works so a couple things i'll touch on but let's first go down into um for me the basement which is where my breaker box is so let's go down there and um, do step one all right, so now I'm in the basement. Here is my, you know, carrier. It's really the same thing as um, Generac backup generators. This is the automatic transfer um, panel. So it has a uh, 70 amp, uh, yeah, 70 amp um, breaker that feeds it. And then it has a lot of these backup circuits, which, you know, it's the critical stuff like your water pump, um, you know, the well, the um, sump pump, the kitchen lights, microwave, um, the heat, that kind of stuff is all powered through here, but the rest of my circuits are not. So what I can do is I can flip off this um, main breaker and that will keep the generator going. So it thinks that grid power is off. And then if I wanna power the rest of these circuits, the most critical one that you do is you always turn off your main breaker because you don't want to back feed into the grid because obviously if there's um, linemen working to restore power and you're back feeding power you can actually electrocute them because they think you know the power is off but you're actually sending new power um, you know the wrong way back to them so it's critical that you turn off the main and then obviously when you want to um, change things out you need to turn off your generator first and then you'll come back here and flip the main as the last thing so it's the first thing you turn off and the last thing you turn back on that that's number one critical so i'll go ahead and turn off my backup generator one so now it's going to stay on until i flip that one back on i'll turn off my main so now my main's off but my barn comes in through here this 100 amp service so i will back feed from the barn to this and then obviously you know the way it works is this is just a metal connection and so when i create power out there at the barn it goes through that circuit and then it um makes that whole bus bar live and since this is a 220 it's both bus bars so um 
what you need for your house if you want to do this you need a 220 circuit and then obviously th that circuit needs to be big enough to power your house so it can't be a 15 or 20 amp circuit you know it needs to be you know at least 50 amp um, is probably what you're looking to get i have a 100 amp here but it's actually only a 50 amp outlet out of the barn so the barn has a 50 amp breaker um, at it so let's go out to the barn where i will hook up the generator through a welding outlet when I come into the barn, I have its own breaker panel. Now, if you don't have a barn, you're just using a garage outlet or something, you don't have to do this step. But for this barn one, I have a main breaker. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off so that it's not connected to the house. But now I left the breaker on for the generator itself that I'm gonna plug into a welding outlet. Um, but the point of this is that I'm just powering up the barn and that way I can just limit the damage if anything does go wrong, but uh, I'm confident nothing will. So right here, I have a welding outlet. So that's a 50 amp outlet. And then uh, I have this extension cable for my welder. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in here. And now remember, it's it's dead because it's uh, I have it off at the main in the barn. But now I have this cable here you can hear my backup generator whole house is over there all right so this here i made an adapter piece to go from the uh, wall to the generator and now the danger with this is that it's a male plug on both ends so that means that when you plug it in you can shock yourself because you know typically you have a male and a female end to prevent you from being able to touch a hot wire. So you gotta be very careful with how you do this. And I'll show you the step that I take to make sure I don't um, you know, risk touching a hot wire. All right, so right now they're all dead. And I know that because I turned off the main power at the barn just to make sure. But so this one has a, a 220 plug which uses this RV style. I'll include a link to um, this wire here, but I had to make this adapter to go from the female end of it. This typically it goes from a male to a female. So I had to make a jumper that's two males. And you have to do this whatever type of outlet you have. If you have a dryer outlet or some other type of 220 to use. All right, so now I plug that into my extension cord. Okay, so now it's all plugged up and nothing is on. So that's how I make sure I'm safe. I do all that before I even get close to starting up the generator. That guy's on now. So now I'm gonna go back into my barn and I'm gonna flip the main breaker. That yeah, lights back on here is nice. Flip the main breaker, that'll give back feed power to the house. All right, so now the house should have power and uh, I'll go back in there and check on everything and then I'll have to wait and uh, see how the uh, power goes. Luckily my utility will text me when power is back. And then that, that's the only way to tell for me because I'll be off my generators the whole time and I'm off grid power completely. So um, let's go back in there and I can turn on AC and stuff now because uh, my whole home one doesn't do the AC, but it's like 86 degrees. You can see I'm sweating. So it's gonna be nice to have AC here for the, uh, for the afternoon. All right, so I know my viewers are smart, but 
always put the generator outside. Never put it inside, never put it in the garage with the exhaust pointing out the door and thinking that's gonna work. Carbon monoxide kills a lot of people, so uh, don't do that. Keep it outside, have your windows closed and your uh, doors closed. You know, I feel really comfortable out here because it's out here in the barn. No one's out here, no one's sleeping. So even if it were inside the barn, um, you know, it wouldn't hurt anyone. It would, it would be unsafe to be inside the barn still though. All right, so we're inside. I got power to all the outlets now, not just the critical ones. And then I can go back in here to my, uh, AC and turn that bad boy on and it's going to kick on. There we go. That's quite the, uh, the surge for that little generator, but it handled it. So now I got AC on the main floor again, which is great. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, feel free to uh, comment below how you hook up your own generator, what you do different and, um, and good luck.